respirations, his pain, his temperature. And now I'm going to assess his neurological status. Mr. So-and-so, can you tell me your name and date of birth? He said, yeah, even though I just told you, my name is Mr. So-and-so, and my birthday is such and such. Okay, can you tell me where you are right now? Well, I'm at Tulsa Tech, and all these people are staring at me. Okay, and do you know what month it is? He's like, I think it's December. And do you know why you're here today? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, first I got all. Okay, so now I can say my patient is alert and oriented times four, right? Okay, so then now I'm gonna do an overall assessment of his skin, and I'm looking at the color, temperature, moisture, texture, turbor, any injuries or lesions, and I'm gonna do that throughout my assessment. Now I can move on to the next page. So we're going to start with hair, and I'm going to look at Mr. So-and-so's hair, and I'm just like looking at the distribution, the quality, and so on. So Mr. So-and-so has gray hair, pretty good amount of it, does have a little ring of power back here, but I don't see any, you know, lesions or anything like that. So now I'm going to inspect his eyes. So Mr. So-and-so, I need to turn the lights off in the room, so I'm turning the lights off, because we'll be in the little rooms over here, so you can actually turn the lights off. So I'm turning the lights off. I'm gonna get my pen light. So Mr. So-and-so, I'm just gonna shine this light in your eyeballs, okay? Just keep looking straight forward for me. So I'm gonna shine my light in the one eye and watch his pupils. Then come over here, shine the light in his eyeballs and watch his pupils. Okay, thank you, Mr. So-and-so. Now one more thing I need you to do for me. I need you to look at that air vent right there on the ceiling, okay? And then now I need you to look at my pen. Okay, so now look at the air vent and look at my pen. And you'll see his pupils go like this. So now I can say my patient's pupils are equal round reactive to light and accommodation. Okay? And then I'm also, while I'm doing that, inspecting for symmetry. His eyes look nice and symmetrical. And I don't notice any drainage, redness, or jaundice. And then I'm going to go to his ears. So I like to come down to the foot of the bed and what some people like to do you don't have to do is you could stand here and assess his eyes nose and ears for symmetry so you could say that if you wanted to and i can see that his ears are symmetrical so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to look at the ear canal and i don't see any redness drainage or cerumen right with blood Okay, now I'm going to mosey on over to the other side and look at this one. No blood drainage discharge through me. Can you hear that? Okay, great. Then I'm going to walk back over there because my paper is So, the ears. Now I'm going to look at his nose. I've already inspected it for symmetry. I'm going to check patency. So, Mr. So and so, what I need you to do is put one finger on the side of your nose. And breathe in and out. And then do it on the other side. Sorry, I'm congested. So his nares are patent, and I don't see any discharge or anything like that. Okay? And then I'm going to look in his mouth. Mr. So and so, you open your mouth for me. Okay, great. So his lips, mucous membranes, tongue, teeth, gums look good. Pink color, no drainage, and his mouth is symmetrical. Okay? So now I'm going to move on to your neck. So Mr. So-and-so, I need you to just bend your head forward and back, inside, inside. Okay, great, thank you. So now I'm going to palpate your lymph nodes, Mr. So-and-so. So I'm going to start up here behind his ears, kind of at his hairline, okay? And kind of walk my fingers down, feeling all the way through here, up under his jawline and down his neck feeling for lymph nodes, okay? So that's kind of what it looks like. Start up and then work your way down and feel all through here for his lymph nodes. Okay, thank you. And then now I'm gonna palpate his carotis. So I'll palpate the one carotis, palpate the other. And this is the one time where it's okay for you to palpate and then reach across and then palpate. Then I'm gonna get my stethoscope and I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna listen. And then I can say I did not feel a thrill or auscultate a bruise in his carotid. 
Then we're gonna go to the next page, and we're gonna look at his chest. I think he's all here. Okay. Oh look, Mr. Stone. So you have boobs. <laughs> okay. So I would verbalize, okay, that his breasts are symmetrical and I don't see any lumps, and then I'm gonna do the heart sounds. So I just lifted this up for demonstration purposes. You don't actually have to lift up your patient's gown, but I do expect that you do not listen to heart or lung sounds over clothing. You have to go underneath. Okay, so that's why I lifted up his gown. So I would expect that you guys would lift, like go under or like this way and listen underneath his clothes. Okay? So I'm gonna listen to his heart rate. Hey, Mr. Stone, so I'm gonna listen to your heart rate. Just breathe normally for me, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna listen to his heart sound, or his lung sound. So I'm gonna do the tops, and compare the tops together, and then compare the lowers together, okay? And I would note that his chest is rising symmetrically bilaterally. I would note the rate and depth of his respirations. His respiratory rate's about 16, and they're even and unlabored. And then I would also auscultate his lateral um, breath sounds. So I'm going to listen up here. And then for the laterals, you can listen to the top and the bottom because it's a lot of blocking. For the top, I'm going to listen to the lower. And then I'm going to walk myself around and listen to the top and the lower. Okay, it's really important that we don't reach across our patients. Okay, because that just is A, it's awkward and it hurts your back and it's uncomfortable and it puts you way too close to your patient, okay? Because who knows, Mr. So-and-so might be a creeper and try to like, <laughs> weird things happen. So don't reach across your patients, okay? We're gonna walk around. So I'm done with his chest, so I'll cover him back up. And then I would ask that he sit up, okay? And I would listen to his back. So you're gonna listen to the uppers, right? The middles, and then the lowers. Okay, and he kind of wanted to have that zigzag pattern, just so it's more methodical. Okay, so top, top, and then just go straight down, then over, straight down, then over. Okay, and then I would feel his spine. Okay, it's a nice soft S curve. I don't feel any kyphosis, lordosis, or scoliosis. And then now I'm going to inspect his upper extremities. Okay, Mr. Sum, so I'm going to look at your arms. Find your arm. We'll just pretend it's like right there. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at his extremities. I'm checking the color, temperature. I'm going to check the range of motion. Mr. So and so, can you lift your arms up like this and out like that? Now? Okay, great. Sensation. So, Mr. So and so, close your eyes for me. Can you tell me where I'm touching? You're touching my hand. Tell me where I'm touching? I'm touching my arm. Okay, thank you. And then we're gonna check for edema. I don't see any swelling in his arms. Strength. So Mr. So-and-so, I need you to grip my hand for me and squeeze my hand. Never tell him to squeeze as hard as you can because somebody will break your fingers. So just squeeze my fingers for me. Okay, thank you. And then I'll have him check his flexation and extension. So you can just have him move his wrists and fingers, whatever you wanna do, check that, okay? And then I'm going to palpate his radial pulses bilaterally. Okay, they feel good. Now I'm gonna check his cap refill. So that means you're gonna squeeze his fingertips and his nail beds and check the color in those, both sides, okay? And I would do it on a couple of fingers just to check it. Okay, thank you, Mr. So-and-so. Um, so like this yes. would feel both pulse on one side and then come to the other side. What you can do is have them like lift because when it's a real person, it's easier and you can have feel both at the same time because you're not having to like reach over him to get to his arm. Okay, so then we're going to move to abdomen. Okay, and usually for the abdominal assessment, it's better if you can, you know, expose our abdomen because we're looking for shape, contour, scars, lesions, rashes. I mean, he's got some exposed bowel. Good feel. And then we're going to auscultate his bowel sounds. So I'm going to start in the right lower. 
and listen. And you usually listen until you hear a bell sound. So you hear a sound, you can move up to the next quadrant and listen. Next quadrant and then down. Okay? So I listened and now I'm going to do light palpation. So Mr. So-and-so, I'm going to touch your belly and I just want you to let me know if it hurt or is uncomfortable. And just lightly press across his belly and kind of do two scoops across and just lightly palpating across their belly. Okay, great. So now Mr. So-and-so, I need to inspect your perineal area and I'm looking for any lesions or discharge. When was the last time that you voided? Okay, did you have any burning or pain with that? Okay, and Mr. So-and-so, when was your last menstrual cycle? Okay, and I'm also assessing his rectum, looking for hemorrhoids or lesions. I don't see anything. And when was your last bowel movement? Okay, great, thank you. So now we can go to the legs and the feet. So, I'm gonna uncover you. femoral pulse. So femoral pulses are right here in our groin, okay? So you got to get it all up and comfortable with Mr. So-and-so. And I have gloves on if I'm going to be feeling right. their femoral pulse, okay? Feel your femoral? Okay. And the popliteal is back here behind the knee, okay? And then when you come down to the feet, your posterior tibial is on the inside of your ankle. Okay, so if you feel your ankle, there's kind of a soft spot right in here. It's in that soft spot behind your ankle. Okay, and then I'm going to feel your dorsalis pedis. So the best way to find the dorsalis pedis is you have this crease right here between your big toe and your second toe. So start there and you're going to come up the foot to where like it kind of arches at the top and very lightly palpate right there and you will find the dorsalis pedis pulse okay it's very easy to obliterate so you have to lightly press okay that trips up students a lot because they're like i can't feel it Where is it? it's like you have to lightly press okay because it's just a very small vessel right by the surface okay so i've assessed all his pulses and i'm going to do the same thing like with his uppers look at the temperature the color Sensation, you know, close your eyes and tell me where I'm touching. Tell me where I'm touching. Okay. And edema. I don't see any pitting edema. Any swelling. Okay. And then strength. So, Mr. So and so. And I would do this with both feet in case people just don't come down this far. Can you press down on my hand like the gas pedal? Okay. Now pull up against my hand with your foot. And I'm doing that on both feet at the same time. So I'm standing down here doing that, okay? And that assesses their strength level. Okay, and it kind of does flexation and extension too, if you want. You can just have him move his feet for you if you want. Okay? And then I've assessed his capillary refill on both feet. He's bleeding his little toenails, checking for color change. Okay? And then now I'm gonna position Mr. So and so for comfort. Cover it back up. Are you comfortable like that? Yep. Okay. I'm going to make sure the side rails are up, that the bed is in the lowest position, and that the patient's call light is within reach. Thank you for letting me take care of you today. Is there anything else I can do for you before I leave? Okay. I'm going to perform hand hygiene, and I'm going to document. Done. It's not so hard at all, is it? So 